We're diving into a ton of specific details in this video on Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, going over everything you need to know from the new wonder weapons, all the field upgrades, the perks, the special zombies, the bosses, and more. There's a lot of stuff returning from Cold War and some brand new stuff, so I thought I'd package everything into this video so you know exactly what's coming. So let's firstly talk about wonder weapons and what are in the game. Well, as you can see from the early gameplay, of course the ray gun is returning. It's a classic zombies wonder weapon staple. It is there, you can get it from the mystery box you can get it from a weapon case drop which is a very rare reward to get from completing an objective or from just finding it around the map you can also find a ray gun schematic which if you exfil with will allow you to craft a ray gun once every 48 hours before you jump into a game and it works pretty much exactly how you would expect although it looks pretty good now on this new engine we've got another returning wonder weapon which is a surprise to see the wonder Waffer dg2 and again you can get it out the mystery box or through any of the other other methods that I've mentioned, but the Wonder Waffle feels very similar to the one that was in Vanguard Shinonuma, and this can also be pack a punch just like with a ray gun, but it didn't gain any new abilities for doing so. It would just do more damage, have more ammo, and have a cool camo. But the most exciting Wonder Weapon is the brand new one, which is called the Scorcher. And this feels like a really unique blend of some of the Wonder Weapons we've seen in the past, like the Die Shockwave, and its power to blast zombies away, but you do have to charge it up a little bit like the paralyzer or the jet gun it works by charging the gun up and then it shoots a blast of energy towards the zombies that completely decimate them purple blast reminds me a little bit of the color of the sliquifier's goo which i think is just really cool it just looks like a much more slim lined version of the shockwave with the paralyzer and the jet gun which is great but on top of this incredible power it also has the ability to launch you into the air allowing you to gain a massive distance away from zombies and enemies when you need a quick getaway and it's like using one of the launch pads from the moon biodome like you just go absolutely flying let me know what you think of the look of this wonder weapon in the comments below because it looks dang good now we've got to talk perks because a lot of the cold war perks are returning but there are a few that are missing so in total we have nine perks perks we have juggernaug death perception quick revive phd flopper speed cola elemental pop deadshot daiquiri stamina up and tombstone most of these work exactly how you'd expect them to but some have been altered slightly one of the biggest changes is to the tombstone soda perk where it is a lot more useful where now if you die out completely you will drop a tombstone that you'll be able to recover in your next game of modern warfare 3 zombies to regain your loadout so not even in the same game when you next infill which could be days from from that moment you can get everything back from your body phd flopper is in the game now and this is different to phd slider that was in cold war because this is the good old-fashioned phd flopper where if you dolphin dive no matter what gradient of floor you're on will cause your character to create a flopping explosion which is fantastic there's no full damage and you don't take any explosive damage and i can confirm that because i used the ray gun with phd it felt really good being able to shoot the floor a big surprise though is the change to quick revive where it will allow you to revive your teammates faster but it doesn't regenerate your health quicker like it did in cold war at least from our understanding of it from our play test death perception is also very useful in this game as it allows you to see zombies through walls but it can also allow you to see objective points through walls as well making certain parts of an objective that are hidden easier to see moving on from perks let's talk about field upgrades because again a lot of the cold war field upgrades are returning but two important ones are missing so here is the full list and as you can see both ring of fire and toxic growth are missing and we aren't quite sure why but i think ring of fire may be coming later down the line at least that's what it seemed at treyarch so looking at the list on screen we have healing aura energy mine lightning links ross blast ether shroud and frenzied guard and from my gameplay experience healing aura was absolutely one of the most powerful field upgrades ever because it would heal and revive players from any distance regardless of where they were on the map so it was a really crutch way to revive people when they weren't near you and in some of the gameplay you can also see that lightning links is used quite a lot where like a wonder Waffer, it chains lightning up with hordes of zombies creating this prolonged high damage output situation but it is a bit weird to not see ring of fire or toxic growth here on launch maybe they'll be coming later down the line with season updates but we all know ring of fire is just easily the best field upgrade that we've ever seen so maybe it was a bit too overpowered i genuinely don't know but let's talk about alternate ammo types because because these are all returning from Cold War, such as Brain Rot, Cryo Freeze, Dead Wire, Napalm Blast, and Shatter Blast. And rather than getting these from the Pack-a-Punch machine with the sub menus instead of Pack-a-Punching 
the weapon, these will just be found out in the wild. So when I played, I managed to find both Cryo Freeze and Brain Rot just by completing an objective and getting it from the reward rift that you get from completing each side objective. The data miners have also found the name of another alternate ammo type we've not seen before called the Shadow Vortex ammo type. Not too sure exactly what it means, but if you have any ideas, let me know below. Whilst this isn't a wonder weapon or anything like that, we do have the LT-53 Casimir grenades returning, which are essentially this Dark Aether Universe's version of the Gersh device. Now let's talk about contracts, which are going to be littered all over the map as the mini side objectives for you to do. Now this might not be the complete full list, but what we know so far is that there is the Aether Extractor, a big bounty, cargo delivery, an escort mission, Outlast, Merc Defend, Relic Hunt, Spore Control, and Weapon Stash. Some of these are shared directly from DMZ, such as Cargo Delivery and Weapon Stash, which work exactly as they did in those modes where you'd have to simply just deliver cargo to a specific part of the map or Weapon Stash where you'll be standing around a safe that takes a while to open and you'll be dealing with enemies whilst waiting for it to open. But Spore Control is a new one where you have to go to a toolbox somewhere on the map and take out this new equipment, which you need to throw down near these weird spores that have grown that zombies are attracted to. And by throwing down this, it sort of fertilizes it and destroys it. And there are about five of these that will be within a small contained area that you'll need to take out by throwing down the equipment on to complete that objective. For the Aether Extractor contract, there's simply going to be a load of rockets that are going to spawn in in a certain section of the map. And you'll have a time limit in order to get to each of these rockets, overload the Aether Extractors, which will cause them to explode. And once you've taken out all five, the objective will be complete. We see a brief snippet of gameplay of the Outlast objective where they have to go to a certain area and activate what's called a PND. Then they have to remain in the environment while there's analysis on it. And I assume zombies will start attacking you. Now, I'm sure there are contracts that I've missed out in this video. But on top of that, there's also POIs on the map where we have the Aether Storm itself. Then we also have fortresses, strongholds and encampments. So the way these work is that these are all soldier AI occupied areas that escalate in difficulty, starting off with an encampment. Once you complete that, you'll be given a key card to a stronghold. Once you've cleared that stronghold, you'll get a key card to a fortress. Fortress. And inside of the fortress, you're going to come across a massively strong AI boss, which is called a Warlord. Now, according to leakers, there are three currently named Warlord bosses within Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. One being the Chemist, which is funnily enough, a name of a boss within DMZ. One called the Maestro and another called the Rainmaker. Now, I have no idea what each of these Warlords will look like, but I assume that they will all have their own different weapons, their own different abilities that will be used against you that you'll need to counter in order to take them out and to get what will presumably be the best loot out of anything you can get in the game. Outside of these warlords, there are also going to be some special zombies and some boss zombies. So for special zombies, we have the return of the mimics, the disciples, the Kranzi soldat and the manglers. But as you've seen from the gameplay in the trailer, we have a new variation of the abomination called the mega abomination, which is a three headed version It's three times the size of a normal abomination. And if you go inside of a building to try and hide from it, it can actually smoke you out by producing these babies that come out of its stomach to try and kill you, which is very weird. And from the footage, looks to be quite a powerful boss to take down. But there is also another secret giant worm boss that we see at the very end of the trailer, which has been hinted to require more than just one tier in order to take down. We don't know exactly how this boss spawns, but from data miners, they found that the name of this thing is called the Gormgant. Oh, I'm really excited to learn more about this boss, how it spawns, how we take it down down and what the rewards are, but this seems to be a massive world boss and in theory should give us the best rewards once you've taken it down. That about covers absolutely everything, but if you want to see a video where I break down everything and give you every single piece of information we know, let me know if you want to see that video by dropping a thumbs up, but let me know your thoughts below. Subscribe for more.